like a pro. <laughs> That's what he does. <laughs>Hey y'all and welcome back to Brandy Beauty TV. Today we'll be doing a really simple, really basic, really standard highlighting technique, highlighting placement. And I just absolutely love this technique. For starters, well, let me get, before I get ahead of myself, this is my client Brittany. Um, and she has a beautiful head of like light, well I won't even say light brown. It's kind of like a dark brown, but it actually just looks a little bit lighter on camera. Um, but it's like, it's like, it's like a dark medium brown somewhere in there. Um, beautiful head of virgin curly hair. And so she said she wanted some highlights. She showed me a picture that she liked and, um, I decided, okay, well, instead of trying to achieve the picture in one session, I told her, you know, I suggest that she kind of does it in like multiple sessions and, you know, that could take like two or three sessions, but that's my go-to preferred method of highlighting hair anyway or accruing dimension over time it's best to just kind of break it up session by session instead of trying to do it all at one time because you really can um you can kind of disrupt the integrity of the hair when you do too much and go too light too quick sometimes not always but most most of the time that's the case so anyways we're going to do this really simple really basic uh placement and i can't wait to share it with y'all Okay, so as you can see, I got Brittany's hair sectioned off into four big sections and I have her hairline. That's about an inch to about an inch and a half of that kind of twisted off and I have it from her ear to, um, from ear to ear. And the reason why I kind of sectioned that part off is because we are going to save that for her face frame, okay? And um, I always like to make sure that everyone is a little bit brighter around the face. Reason being is because when somebody looks at themselves in the mirror and they see their color, they're not looking in the back. They wanna make sure that their front looks good. So I make sure I take uh, extra care and I'm really, really intentional about everything that's going on around that face frame, okay? So got that, we got our big four main sections and we are literally just gonna do a simple brick lay um, placement. That's it. So we're gonna part off our section, our sub subsections rather, and they're gonna be about an inch and a half to two inches wide. And then we're going to pick up pieces no more than about an inch and we're just going to take those and highlight them that's it as for the formula for the lightener i'm using my blonde solutions and 20 volume developer um 20 volume because we just want to go nice and slow um we want to stay e on the easier side and this is not a clay lightener this is just a traditional lightener so you do have to be a little bit more careful because it can get really really messy but if you know what you're doing, you can also always, you know, just adjust the formula so that it can be a little bit thicker and you can lay it on and have a little bit more control. You know, just depending on what works best for you. Now, I've also could have put um, these highlights in foils, but I didn't have to. And I kind of wanted to see them process and I also wanted them to be um, processed just a little bit slower. And if you do open air over foils, you will get a slower process. So just taking section by section and I'm doing one section and then once I move up, I'm gonna put the highlights on the opposite sides. So if I do three on one, as far as like the stitch is concerned, on the next one, I'll do two. On the next one, I'll do three. And I'm just gonna kinda move them up like that. And I'm also working at an angle because working at angles is going to give a more natural diffused look Whereas working on vertical or horizontal is going to give more precise, more less blended um, kind of blends. And those are necessary, but for today, that's not what we were going for. So diagonals it was. But that's it. That's the placement. It's really simple. It's a simple brick lay. You know, it's like you're literally like laying bricks. You know, when you're laying bricks, you don't go straight up. You know, you do one row and then you put um you put another brick every place that there's not i guess you could say the line wherever the line is you're not going to put a brick right on top of the that same brick 
you're gonna place it whatever that line is so that's why they call it a brick lay technique and yeah that's what we're doing and it's it, it's so simple and so easy guys one of my favorite techniques it's a really 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 great technique um and placement for um people who don't have any color or if you're just now starting to uh you know play around with different blends and whatnot this is your initial initial session this is a really 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 good technique for that because you can really build on it really really easy so now it's time to do Brittany's face frame and I'm gonna put these highlights really really close together because I don't want a lot of dimension around the hairline because it can appear very very stripy so um, the dimension from the rest of the head is going to serve as an excellent backdrop against her face frame and she'll be nice and sun kissed and it'll just keep that brightness around her face and when she pulls her hair up in a ponytail or when she um, pulls it back into a ponytail or even if she decides to wear a headband her highlights will just continue to look fresh for a long period of time. So a few things to remember about this placement, y'all, is one, your stitch matters. And when I say your stitch, I'm basically referring to how many pieces you are highlighting within a weave. So after you part your subsections, everything that you weave out, that counts, okay? Um, traditionally speaking, the fewer pieces you have, the more dimensional the hair will be. The closer the stitch, the less dimension. So for example, for face frames, and if somebody really wants to blend out their hair, say they need to blend out their gray or something like that, most of the time, I am going to decide to use a closer stitch. Um, sometimes seven pieces, nine pieces, or sometimes even a baby light. Like they're really, 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 really close. And that's going to diffuse things. Not much dimension there. But when you're using like two pieces, three pieces, hey, sometimes even one piece, you're leaving a lot of dimension in the hair. So that's just a general guide. Now, sometimes um, if you play around with the five stitch or like the seven stitch, that just gives a really nice natural blend. Um, not too dimensional but also not too 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 close together either and sometimes when you do them too 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 close um you just kind of lose all of the color like it, it can almost read like a solid flat wash of color not everybody wants that but as you start playing with your stitches you'll be able to see you know at what points to use what and you can really start creating really different dimensional blends because sometimes I'll use a combination of a variety of stitches when I am coloring hair. So that's something to keep in mind. And as you can see for Brittany's head, hey, two stitches here, three stitches there, two stitches here, three stitches there. That's all I'm doing because I want to make sure that you see both colors and I want them blended really, really nice. I want them bold but blended. I'm going to tone Brittany's hair off camera and I'm going to use Retkin Shades EQ with the gloss solution and I am using 8N, 9T, and 9NA. Um, I wanted to blend these three um, colors together because I wanted to keep her kind of neutral. I wanted an equal uh, balance of warm and cool and that 9T, which is the coolest uh like the coolest tone in a Reckon Shades EQ line is going to really, really, really cool her off. But that end is going to still bring that warmth that we need. Because we're not trying to make her ash. We just want to kind of make her neutral. So, and always remember that um, whatever the hair lifts to, that is 50% of the formula. So 50% of your formula is what's already on your client's head. Everything else, you're just adding to it. So 50% of the formula is what you see and with britney's hair she lifted um of course warm because all hair lifts warm and so everything i do after that is going to add to the warmth or take away from the warmth 
So that's just something that you really should remember when formulating. And um, yeah, it's really, really useful to have a game plan and to know what you're working with before you start mixing up stuff so you don't waste product. So y'all, I was watching a fellow YouTuber on here the other day and um, she was basically just talking about why she decided to leave the hair industry. Well, I should say why she decided to stop servicing clients rather and why she decided to kind of just change up her lane and what she just wanted to do. And basically that was, you know, in a nutshell coming from behind the chair and um i was just you know browsing the comment section because the comments for this video was really really interesting and uh one of her subscribers said um wow you really went through it i just have one question for the hairstylist slash cosmetologist how do you cultivate the type of clientele you desire a clientele that values your superior expertise and customer service a clientele who understands and respects that premium skill commands a premium price point. I ask because I've been going to my stylist for over 10 years. Most of her clients are professional working women like myself who respect her time, her expertise, and don't fuss about her prices. Is my stylist an exception to have? The type of clientele you describe? Is the experience sin described really the norm for stylists? Just wondering. Okay, so here's my answer to this complex question <laughs> how do you build a clientele that you love and how do you keep hair in this industry how do you balance all of it so I don't have all of this figured out but I can tell you that I have so much peace in and out of the salon uh, what works for me is I prioritize my life in categories, you know, and by order of importance. On top of that list for me is God. Um, two is myself, because if I'm not healthy and if I'm not happy, then I, it's impossible for me to give from an empty cup. Three is my family. Um, and four is my, my career, my job which I don't even really look at it like that because I just love it. Like, I would do hair for free. Like, I have done it for free. So, <laughs> and, and that's how I organize it. Um, I don't let hair stress me out. Um, I honestly don't ever see that happening. I Because this, if you let, I mean, this just goes for any industry. If you let your job run you rugged, you will go crazy. You will go crazy and you will experience major burnout. And a lot of stylists experience that. Um, people trying to negotiate their prices. Um, people just not showing up. And this is not to say that I haven't experienced those things, but I nip them in the bud so quick when they do. And I reevaluate my business and my business structure when that happens because I don't want that to be able to easily happen again. And you, you want to try to bulletproof your business as much as possible. But for me, that begins with those first three things that matter to me, you know, God, myself, my family. And then after that, it's, it's hair and it's the clients and also doing clients and servicing people that actually appreciate you. You know, I'm not interested in doing everybody's hair. I've never been interested in being the, the it client, the it hairstylist, the it girl, um, I don't care about the popularity or the, you know, the social media fame that, uh, you know, comes along with this territory sometimes. Cause I feel like nowadays the hairstylists are the celebrities. <laughs> That's a whole other topic, whole other video. But, um, I just love doing hair and it's really, it's not that deep for me. Like, do you want your hair done? Yes or no. Okay. Come on. You know, we can save all the other stuff. I don't want the entourage. I don't want the groupies. I don't want the nonsense. I don't want all the attitude. Like, do you want what I, the type of hair that I do? If you don't want that, then I'll just refer you out. You know, I don't want to deal with no attitudes and stuff because I don't give my clients attitude. You know, I treat everybody kind and fair to everyone. So I expect the same thing. And if at any point I start feeling stressed out, then I start coming up with an exit plan for that client. So I no longer have to service them because I don't want to be drained. You know, I love hair. And at any point somebody starts making me feel 
um, like I'm not in love with it, then that's a problem for me. And I just try to nip that in the bud really, really quick. And that goes for all parts of my life. Like <laughs> even just regular people, family members, strangers, it don't matter. You know, you, there's, some, some, there's an issue or something like that. And I'm feeling like, you know, uneasy and I'm not my best self around you. Then I just kind of just kind of nip you out. And you got to protect yourself like that. You just have to. It doesn't mean that you are selfish, but it means that you care about yourself first. And so I try to just keep that as a standard in all areas of my life. And so to answer her question, um, that's how I have done it. That's how I do it. And it's worked for me. All right, y'all. So as you can see, I have already trimmed the perimeter of Brittany's hair. And I actually went through and trimmed the interior off camera because I really, really, really wanted to show you guys this, what I'm doing right here. So sometimes trimming the inside or the interior and the perimeter is simply just not enough. Sometimes some people's split ends are raised and that cuticle can be so destroyed. Um, that you have to literally go on top of the hair shaft and seal it. So this technique that I'm using is super, super useful because it allows you to pull the hair down with maximum tension, you know, as much tension as you can use without hurting the client and really go on top with your shears and cut all those little pieces out. Now we're not literally going through and just like closing our shears 100%. We're really just using like the inside of the shear and when doing this technique, you need to make sure that your shears are sharpened. You do not want to attempt to do this with dull shears because you can damage the hair more. And you can also cut the unnecessary pieces of hair too. So, um, like I said, take maximum tension as much as you, you know, as much tension as you possibly can use without hurting your client because you don't want their scalp hurting. And go on top of that hair shaft and just lightly just kind of just snip away at the little pieces that you see and those pieces are going to automatically um see them you're going to see them coming out so you'll know exactly what to cut but um this is not the time to be experimenting um <laughs> i will say if you've never done it maybe practice on a mannequin first or um practice on a client who really 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 doesn't mind because this can get disastrous really really quick and you don't want to do that right? you don't want to deal with those consequences and that aftermath <laughs> so um yeah but hey it is useful though and it is really 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 helpful and you can really turn a complete a head completely around by doing this technique because sometimes split ends um, on the inside look worse than the ends because you just had these little pieces little flyaways just sticking up so i steal them and i cut them down and um britney's hair you know this can come from a variety of things you know when you have split ends like this and they're just sticking out from the interior of your hair any type of manipulation brushes combs um not getting your hair trimmed at all those are all things that um pretty much are accompanied with this type of situation so y'all get your hair trim it's very 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 important um you don't have to do it all the time but staying on a good regimen keeps these kind of situations at bay Okay, y'all, so I'm about to finish curling Brittany's hair using my one inch barrel iron and I am just putting some, you know, my signature toss waves in there. And I love waves. I love waves on everybody. You get waves, you get waves, you get waves. Everybody gonna get waves when I do that hair, okay? <laughs> um, and I also love how it falls too. Like it, it keeps movement in the hair, keeps body in the hair. If you want to flexi ride it, you can. If you want to wrap it, you can. Like there's so many different ways you can go after getting your hair curled like this. So I love, love, love setting and finishing hair with the waves. It's so it's so current, so modern. It, it just always looks good to me. So we are just about finished and Brittany's hair came out so good. You see that shine is there after that good trim. That's why I had to get those ends trimmed y'all because it really does make a big difference. You know, you can really revive your hair, the shine, everything with a really, really, really good cut. You know, it can go from dull to just effortless, flowing, shiny, all that. And um, that's important. 
you know, it's, it's really important. You ain't got to get it trimmed all the time, but it's really good to, you know, stay on a really good regimen. And as for Britney's highlights, I probably won't see her again. She won't be due for a good highlight retouch, probably for another six months to, I would say, a year. And that's normally how I prefer to do it. Um, I don't like highlighting people's hair all the time because it's unnecessary and you can really interfere with the integrity of the hair. You know, you want to keep the hair as healthy as possible. So less is always more. That's, that's kind of how I think. So thank y'all for watching. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you to all the new subscribers, y'all. We are almost to a thousand. Ah! So excited. We almost there, guys. Almost there. I don't know what I'm going to do when we reach this 1,000. Oh, uh, y'all going to have to help me think of something. I don't know, but we have to do something. A giveaway or something like that. I don't know. Y'all get down in the comments. Y'all tell me what y'all thinking about. And I'll see y'all in my next video.